we learned a lot about the asymptotic notations in our previous lectures now to consolidate the information obtained so far i have created this lecture in which i will summarize all the asymptotic notations we have learned so far so without any further delay let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics the topic of this lecture is asymptotic notations summary i will summarize all the asymptotic notations we have learned in this lecture so let's proceed and let's see the summary of asymptotic notations we discussed the bigo notation first and we know according to the definition of the bigo notation fn is bigo of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c times gn for some c greater than 0 and for all n greater than or equal to n not where c and n not are both constants this is what we learned about the bigo notation and we know that gn is called the upper bound of fn because the growth rate of gn is greater than the growth rate of fn fn is big o of gn means gn is the upper bound of fn or sometimes we call gn as the tight upper bound of fn because there can be many upper bounds of fn but we must always select the upper bound which is closest to fn thus we can say gn is the tight upper bound of fn and this means there is the possibility that both fn and gn are the same functions for example we can say n square is big o of n square because we can always select some c here in the right hand side and make c times n square bigger than n square in the left hand side and therefore n square is big o of n square for example we can select c as 2 then we will get 2 n square in the right hand side of the inequality and in the left hand side we have n square n square is less than 2 n square as we all know therefore n square is big o of n square and from the graph also we can observe that 2 n square is growing asymptotically bigger than n square and this means n square is the tight upper bound of n square and we already know what is the meaning of asymptotic growth we know we must always see the growth after some n not let us assume n not is here we are interested in the growth rates of the functions after n not only where n not represents some input so this is the summary of the big o notation let's move to the big omega notation we know the definition of the big omega notation fn is big omega of gn if and only if fn is greater than or equal to c times gn for some c greater than 0 and for all n greater than or equal to n not here we can observe the inequality is different in place of less than or equal to we have greater than or equal to in case of big omega notation and we call gn as the lower bound of fn because the growth rate of gn is smaller than the growth rate of fn sometimes we call gn as the tight lower bound of fn because of the same reason as of big o notation there are many lower bounds out of which the closest lower bound we always select for fn and this will be the big omega of fn hence we can say gn is the tight lower bound of fn for example n square is big omega of n square or we can say n square is the tight lower bound of n square because in the right hand side we can select some constant between 0 and 1 and make the right hand side less than the left hand side for example we can select c as 0.5 then the right hand side becomes 0.5 n square and in the left hand side we have n square n square is clearly greater than 0.5 n square hence we can say n square is big omega of n square from the graph we can observe that 0.5 n square is asymptotically lesser than n square therefore n square is big omega of n square now let's move to the next notation it is the theta notation we know in case of the theta notation this inequality must be satisfied fn must be less than or equal to some constant c2 times gn and it must also be greater than or equal to some c1 times gn 
Gn in this case is called the tight bound of Fn because Gn acts as both the upper bound and the lower bound of Fn for some constants C2 and C1 respectively. This is the meaning of tight bound. This means both Fn and Gn are asymptotically equal. For example, we can say n square is theta of n square because as we just saw, n square is both the upper bound and the lower bound of n square. So, n square is theta of n square. From the graph, we can also observe the same. In this graph, we can observe that 0.5 n square is asymptotically less than n square and 2 n square is asymptotically bigger than n square. Here we can see that C2 is 2 and C1 is 0.5. Gn which is n square is acting as both the upper bound and the lower bound of n square. Hence we can say n square is theta of n square. So these are the major notations we have studied. Apart from these notations, we have studied two more notations. After theta notation, we have studied the small o notation. According to this notation, this inequality must be satisfied. Fn must be strictly less than C times Gn and hence Gn is called the strict upper bound of Fn. Here, there is no possibility that both Fn and Gn can be asymptotically equal. In case of the big O notation, there is the possibility that both the functions Fn and Gn can be asymptotically equal. Fn can be less than C times Gn or it can be equal to C times Gn. This is the reason why Gn is called the upper bound of Fn. But in case of small o notation, there is no such possibility. Both the functions cannot be asymptotically equal. This is the reason why Gn is called the strict upper bound of Fn. For example, n square is small o of n cube. Here we cannot take n square because both Fn and Gn cannot be equal. n square is small o of n cube because n cube is asymptotically bigger than n square. This can be observed from the graph as well. We can see the growth rate of n cube is much larger than the growth rate of n square. So clearly, n square is small o of n cube or we can say n cube is the strict upper bound of n square. Now the last notation is small omega notation. And according to this notation, fn must be greater than c times gn. Here we now have greater than sign. This means fn must be strictly greater than c times gn and hence we can say gn is the strict lower bound of Fn. Now if we observe the big omega notation, here we have this inequality, Fn greater than or equal to C times Gn. Here we have the possibility that both the functions Fn and Gn can be asymptotically equal. So that is why we say lower bound. Gn is the lower bound of Fn. But here we do not have this possibility. Both Fn and Gn cannot be asymptotically equal. Fn must be strictly greater than C times Gn. Or in other words, we can say C times Gn must be strictly lesser than Fn. And that's why Gn is called the strict lower bound of Fn. For example, n square is little omega of n because n is strictly less than n square. So, n is the strict lower bound of n square. From the graph, we can observe that n is the strict lower bound of n square. So, these are all the asymptotic notations we have studied so far. And this is the summary of all the asymptotic notations. With this, we are done with this topic. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.